Brandon said, my name is Eric Carswell. I attend church in Morganton, North Carolina at Salem United Methodist Church. And uh, Frankie and I would like to thank you for allowing us to be with you today. And I would like to thank you for allowing me to share the word with you today. Amen. The scripture I've chosen today is Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Father God, we love you, Lord. I pray that the words I speak this morning will be your words and that you will open our hearts and minds to these words. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I chose this psalm today because this is a psalm of thanksgiving. It's written by someone who's celebrating their relationship with God. And if you look at our, I guess you could say, our church calendar or even our regular yearly calendar, we're getting towards the end of the time that we have a lot of our larger celebrations during the church year. I mean, a few months ago we had Thanksgiving, which is the time that we get together with our families and we give thanks for the blessings that we've had, for the family that we have. And then the day after Thanksgiving, we start celebrating Christmas. And that's the time that we come together as a congregation, as Christians, and we, and we thank God for sending His Son, the Christ child. And here in a couple weeks, we're going to celebrate Easter, which is our time to come together and give thanks that Christ died for our sins and to celebrate his resurrection over death. But I also chose this psalm for another reason. If you look at this psalm, it's not only a psalm of thanksgiving, but it can be a psalm of instruction. If you look at how it's written, there are four verses that tell us how we should worship God. And there's one verse that tells us why we should worship God. So if you'd like to get your Bibles out or your smartphones or whatever you, you read on and follow along with me, let's look at it verse by verse, by verse and let's see what we can learn from this psalm today. The first verse is, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Can you imagine what it would be like if all the earth did shout for joy to the Lord? Or if you just forget about the whole earth and just think about all the Christians, if all the Christians just got together and shouted for joy to the Lord, what that would be like. like Unfortunately, a lot of times, instead of shouting to the Lord, we shout at the Lord. We let, we let the world come in. We let the things that weigh heavy on our heart come in and they get to be more than our joy of the relationship that we have with God. And that's when we forget to shout to God and we start shouting at God because we get angry. I mean, we're human. And those things happen. We get angry. We get frustrated. We get tired of how things are going. We're tired of seeing the same result for the same thing time and time and time again. But when it gets like that, we have to stop. We have to look back over our lives. And we have to see the things that God, we have to see where God has been in our life. And how involved in our lives He is every single day. The blessings that He puts in our lives every day. That's why we shout for joy to the Lord. The second verse says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Now I know sometimes when we come to church and we look, we get the bulletin, and we, look, we open it up and look at the song, songs that are listed that we're going to sing that day and we're kind of like, ah, those are not really my favorite songs. Or, I don't know that one. Or, you know, this, this reason or that reason. And, when we get, and then when it comes to time to sing, we just kind of stand there and we'll hum along and we're just kind of, you know, just kind of, you know, just kind of getting through to the end of the song. Well, I'd like for each of you to take a hymn. 
and I'm going to let John Wesley answer why we should sing joyfully. If you'll turn to the fifth page, I believe it is, you should see the page that is marked directions for singing. And there's two that I'd like to point out. There's seven of them total. If you would like to read them for your own knowledge, that's great. But there's two that I would like to point out. The first one is number four. It says, sing lustily and with a good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep. But lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of its being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. And number seven, above all, sing spiritually. Have an eye to God in every word you sing. Aim at pleasing Him more than yourself or any other creature. In order to do this, attend strictly to the sense of what you sing and see that your heart is not carried away with the sound but offered to God continually. So shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve here and reward you when He cometh in the clouds of heaven. You know, a lot of times I get caught up in the fact I look at see what the songs are for the service that day and I'm like, you know, I don't know that song. That's not one of my favorites. I, you know, we all do it. The one thing that I think we forget, you know, I'm sharing with you out of the book of Psalm today, but if you stop and think about it, the songs that are in your hymnal, at some point, somewhere, somebody wrote that as their song. That is their way of praising God. That is their way of celebrating their relationship with God. So when we join with them in singing their song, we're celebrating what God has done for them and what He has done for us. Verse number 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. And some of you may wonder how that fits into the way we worship God or how we worship God. When we forget that the Lord is God, when we forget that we are His people, that we are His sheep, that's when this world starts coming in on us. That's when this world's worries start weighing on our minds and on our hearts. That's how that, that's how that interferes with our worship is when we start to forget that the Lord is God. He's the one in control, not this world, but God. Verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. If you stop and think about it, when you walk through the back doors or the front doors of the church, wouldn't that be the Lord's gates? Wouldn't the sanctuary be like His court? I mean, how often do we come in? I mean, I don't know how much each of you here see each other during the week or how much time you spend with each other or how much time you spend talking with each other. But I know there's a lot of people where I go to church at that I only see when I'm in church. So a lot of times you get caught up and getting caught up with those people, finding out what happened the past week. And a lot of times you stand in the middle of the sanctuary and you end up griping about this person at work or griping about how this went or griping about how that went, had a bad doctor's visit, you know. I know that you need to unload your heart and it's good to have a friend that listens to what you have to say or what you need to say. But when we're in here, this is where we come to praise God. These are His courts, and those are His gates. And when we come here, that should be the first and foremost thing that's on our mind, is praising God for all the things that He has done for us. In verse 5, this is why we should worship God. <clears throat> for the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You know, when you stop and think about it, you know, people throw around the word forever a lot, but it's really hard to stop and grasp how long forever is, how long is an eternity. There's, you can't put a, you can't put a value on it. You can't put a number to it. But it's a really long time. But no matter how long forever is, no matter how long eternity is, 
God is always going to be there for us. He's always going to be there. His faithfulness will always be there for us. All he, asks for, all he asks from us in return is our faithfulness to him, our worship to him. And that's so little that we're asked to give, to get everything that he has to offer. I mean, you can't put a price on spending eternity with God. You know, I think for me personally, I think I like this song because it's, it's straightforward. It's, it's easy to understand. It, it tells you what you need to know. And it's simple. I mean, I do real well with simple stuff. You know, there's a, lot of, there's, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible. But there's a lot of things in the Bible that I read that are things you have to read. And you, once you read it, you have to put the Bible aside and you have to stop and think about it. And you have to think about it. And you have to think about it. And you go back and pick the Bible up and read it again. And you have to think about it a little bit more. I don't do well with that type of stuff. If you don't believe me, ask Frankie. She can tell you how impatient I get sometimes. <laughs> I am not. I don't. I'm not going to say I'm not a patient man. But, you know, when it's time, let's, let's, when we got something to do, let's go ahead and get it done. That's the type of person I am. And I struggle with a lot of the, a lot of the lessons that the Bible has to offer us, to give us. Because I do have to stop and think about it. I have to force myself to slow down and stop and think about what it's saying. That's why I love this song. It lays it out there for you. It says, do this, do this, do this. And this is why you do those things. And I think for us, this psalm is, a, is an excellent reminder, a daily reminder of what our relationship with God should be. I mean, it's very easy to get up in the morning and get caught up in the rush of getting the kids to school or getting ready to go to work or this thing or that thing. And God's the last thing on our mind. I mean, when we get up, God should be the first thing on our minds. He should lead us throughout the day. And this psalm is an excellent way to remember that. It's easy to read. It's easy to understand. And I promise you, you know, we're humans. Things, life gets in the way. And we will forget what we're supposed to, what our relationship with God is supposed to be. So if I could, I would love to encourage each of you to use this song. Not just this one. Use the whole Bible. But use this one if you need a daily reminder of what your relationship with God could be and what it should be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.